On the first day of the Feast of Unleavened Bread, when it was customary to sacrifice the Paschal Lamb, the disciples said to Jesus, Where, Where do you want, want us to prepare, prepare the Paschal, Paschal Supper, Supper for you? He directed two of the disciples and said to them, Go into the city and you will come upon a man carrying a water jar. Follow him into a house he enters and say to the owner, the teacher asks, where is my guest room? I want to eat the Passover meal there with my disciples. Then you will be shown an upstairs room, spacious, furnished, with everything in order. That is the place you are to get ready for us. Then the disciples went off. When they reached the city, they found it just as Jesus had told them, and they prepared the Passover supper. When Jesus wept a falling tear, in mercy flow beyond all bounds. When Jesus wept a As it grew dark, Jesus arrived with the twelve. They reclined at the table, and in the course of the meal, Jesus said, The truth is, one of you is about to betray me, one who is eating with me. They were very upset at these words, and one by one they said to him, Surely it's not me. Surely it's not me. Surely it's not me. Surely it's not me. It is one of you, twelve, who dips into the dish with me. The chosen one is going the way the scriptures foretell. But woe to the one by whom the chosen one is betrayed. It were better had that person never been born. During the meal, Jesus took bread, blessed and broke it, and gave it to them, saying, Take this and eat. This is my body. He likewise took a cup, gave thanks, and passed it to them, and they all drank from it. Jesus said to them, This is my blood, the blood of the covenant, which will be poured out on behalf of many. The truth is, I will never again drink of the fruit of the vine until the day I drink it anew in the kingdom of God. As you do the light, receive 
the gifts that come to us by day and by night. I choose to honor the dark, uncertainty and change. Deliver us from fear until only love remains. Honor the dark, honor the dark. as you do the light. Receive uh, the gifts that come to us by day and by night. I choose to uh, honor the dark, uncertainty and change. Deliver us from fear. Let the darkness heal until only love remains. I the darkness out of the darkness. As the darkness dies, we see the light of the night. Sometimes we are so bound, but sometimes we are so unchanged. Let the darkness heal. After singing songs of praise, they walked out to the Mount of Olives. As they were walking, Jesus said to them, You will all fall away, for scripture says, I will strike the shepherd and the sheep will be scattered. But after I have been raised, I will go to Galilee ahead of you. Peter said to Jesus, Even though everyone may fall away, I will not. The truth is, this very night before the cock crows twice, you will deny me three times. But Peter said vehemently, even if I have to die with you, I will never disown you. All the other disciples said the same thing. Then they came to a place named Gethsemane. Sit down here while I pray. Jesus took along with him Peter, James, and John. Then he began to be very distressed and troubled, and he said to them, My heart is filled with sorrow to the point of death. Stay here and keep watch. Jesus went a little further off and fell to the ground, praying that if it were possible, this hour might pass him by. Abba, you have the power to do all things. Take this cup away from me. But let it be not my will, but your will. When Jesus returned, he found them asleep. He said to Peter, Asleep, Simon? Could you not stay awake for even an hour? Be on guard and pray that you not be put to the test. The spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. Going back again, Jesus began to pray in the same words. Upon returning, Jesus found them asleep once again. They couldn't keep their eyes open, nor did they know what to say to him. He returned a third time and said, Still sleeping? Still taking your rest? It will have to do. The hour is upon us. The chosen one is being handed into the clutches of evildoers. Get up. Let's go. Look, here comes my betrayer. While Jesus was still speaking, Judas, one of the twelve, came up, accompanied by a crowd carrying swords and clubs. They had been sent by the chief priests, the religious scholars, and the elders. The betrayer had arranged this signal for them. Whomever I embrace is the one. Arrest him and take him away under guard. Judas went directly to Jesus, embraced him, and said, Rabbi, at this... They laid hands on Jesus and arrested him.
Jesus returned to the table, that simple common space, moving from water and undeserved grace, to bread that nourishes and sustains our place, two simple elements, no time to waste. I should have known there would be water, but of course there would be bread. From the start of creation, God has tried to keep us fed, fed on bread and roses and love we don't notice. I should have known there would be water, but of course there would be bread. I should have known there would be space at the table for grace, space for nerves and questions and absent confessions, space for me and Elijah and Judas without question. I should have known there would be space, but of course there would be bread, for it started with manna and all must be fed. This is my body broken for you, for you 5,000, for you Israelite nation, for you child of the covenant, Judas and Peter. This is my body broken for you. That simple phrase paired with the food of the day makes me human again, nourishes weak spots within. It lifts me up and draws me back in, breathing life into bones that were weary and thin. For it's easy to be so hungry for God that God must appear in the shape of a meal, countering frailty, allowing me to heal. So maybe that's why I come back to this space, because I know God will be here, offering grace. And I need that bread in order to feel, in order to see the kingdom revealed. I should have known there would be water, but of course there would be bread, for I am hungry and all must be fed.